In part one of this series, we simplified a quadcopter rotor arm geometry, imported composite materials, and generated a 2D mesh. In this video, we use the layered section technique to create a composite laminate and apply it to our rotor arm geometry. We'll then add a static load case representing the thrust force from the quadcopter motor and post-process the results. We'll start by opening the mechanical model we created in part one. Right-click the model cell and select Edit to load the model into ANSYS Mechanical. The first thing we need to do is add a coordinate system axial to the rotor arm that we'll use for the directional reference in the composite laminate. Navigate to the coordinate systems object in the model tree. Right-click and insert a new coordinate system. Select the rotor arm body and add it to the coordinate system definition. By default, the new coordinate system is oriented parallel to the global coordinate system. We'll need to change the principal x-axis to define our zero-degree composite reference. Change the x-axis definition in the coordinate system details to geometry selection by opening the drop-down menu next to global x-axis and selecting geometry selection. Toggle the edge selection filter before selecting one of the rotor arm edges and applying it to the second geometry definition. We now have a coordinate system aligned with the rotor arm axis. We'll define our composite laminate using a layered section. Right click the geometry object and insert a new layered section. We'll scope this section to the rotor arm body by first toggling the body selection filter and selecting the rotor arm and applying it to our layered section. We'll then select the coordinate system from the drop-down menu that we created previously. We'll define our layers using the worksheet by clicking the right arrow button in the yellow worksheet cell and selecting worksheet. From here we can add as many composite layers as we need. Right-click inside the table to add a new layer. For this analysis, I'm using 45 degree woven plies sandwiching a quasi-isotropic stack of unidirectional plies which I'll add now. We now have a 1.6 millimeter composite laminate stack that we'll use for our initial static structural analysis. Click the mesh object to return to the mesh view. Toggle the thick beams and shells in the display tab to visually confirm that we have the correct thickness. We now have a composite layered section applied to our mesh so we're ready to add a static structural model for analysis. Click on the model object to bring up the model context menu and hit the analysis drop-down and select static structural to insert the analysis. We can add boundary conditions by right-clicking the static structural object and selecting insert. We'll start with a fixed support where the rotor arm attaches to the quadcopter body. Select the hole and apply it to the fixed support. Next we'll add a 5 newton force to the motor mount hole. Right-click the static structural object again to insert a force. Select the motor mount hole and apply it to the force definition. Since our thrust vector aligns with the global z-axis, we'll change the force definition from vector to components and add negative 5 in the z-component. We're ready to solve the model, so right-click the static structural object and select Solve. Once the model has completed its run, let's add a few result requests to post-process. I'm adding total deformation, von Mises strain, and von Mises stress. Right-click again and evaluate all results. The von Mises stress criterion is not necessarily appropriate for composite materials since it's based on the assumption that the material is isotropic and homogeneous. Composite materials are anisotropic, meaning their properties vary in different directions. More complex failure theories, such as the Siwu failure criterion, are used to predict composite failure, but for now this will give us a good baseline result. Select the result request to review. We can see total deformation of the rotor arm is 28 millimeters, while the highest elastic strain and highest elastic stress occur near the bolt hole connecting the rotor arm to the quadcopter body. This concludes part two of the quadcopter composite rotor arm analysis video series. In part three, we'll explore more advanced composite analysis techniques using ANSYS composite prep post.